Coronavirus Karens are on the loose and a pastor gets arrested because he put on a church service. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Isaac David. And if you're new to this channel, this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. First off, I just wanna give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Um, at this point, during the coronavirus, I'm not able to use do my normal job. So that means I'm kind of full-time content creation and my patrons on Patreon are a huge blessing. So if you'd like to support me on Patreon, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple to give monthly to the work and ministry that I'm doing. Also, subscribe to the channel because I'm putting out new videos all the time. So here we are um, in the state of coronavirus and just dealing with this new reality that we're all living in. And so some a number of videos have surfaced of how do we respond as Christians? What is the take on this? Uh, let's talk about all that. And you know, along with this conversation, um, I think we got to come in with a lot of just wisdom and discernment and this idea of just nuance because you know, as much as we just want to throw each other into maybe camps or try to put labels on each other or, or call each other names, even in the Christian community based on our perspectives on this stuff, um, I think it's really important to come in with a lot of grace and understanding for one another as we're trying to discern, you know, what's wise in this situation. So to give you a little bit of backstory, at least on me, I'm 21 years old. I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and in Canada here, at least in my city, uh, every non-essential business has been shut down. So government mandated is shut down. So that included churches. So at this point, churches are not able to meet uh, physically in their church building that they have. And this has caused a lot of people um, across the world, because this has happened across the world in the United States, to just begin to wrestle with you know, hey, the government's telling us to shut down. Should we do that? What What is wise here? What What is our calling as Christians? We know when the Bible says, hey, don't forsake the assembling of the saints. Um, but at the same time, we're supposed to love our neighbor and care for them. So what is the wisest thing to do in this situation? So I have a couple just random thoughts that I've been writing down. And, and as you can tell from my hair, um, I've just been, you know, in quarantine mode, haven't left the house. I've just been writing and my head's a little bit in shambles, maybe you could say. <laughs> but anyway, I have a couple thoughts on this. Number one is, look, the fact that government is telling churches they have to close down, we shouldn't be celebrating that. We shouldn't be rejoicing rejoicing in that, um, that that's that's not a great thing um, for church, for government to kind of step over over their jurisdiction into the church and start or ordering around the church. Like that's not something we were happy about or, or we should be happy about. Um, as Christians, we want to fellowship. We desire to fellowship with one another. Digital fellowship is not is not a, an appropriate substitute for that. It's less than. It is not ideal. There's this idea that's been going around, this idea that the cure should not be worse than the disease. Um, as I've been wrestling with this, and I, I have to say, I'm not going to come in this video with a super hot take because I'm still processing this, um, but but also this idea, okay, the cure shouldn't be worse than the disease. Part of the problem is that we don't have enough information to really make those judgments at this point. Okay, just to get this out of the way, um, you know, some people are shutting down their churches and other people are not. And, and some people that are not are saying that the people that are, are you know, n not keeping this, this, this calling to, you know, the assembly of the saints and they're submitting to the government and they're giving the government too much power over them and other people that are continuing or shutting down their services or, or saying this other said hey look you're putting your neighbors at risk hey you know we got to be wise in this and and you know it's all about safety this kind of idea so i understand i really do understand both sides of the argument um but as we're kind of processing this i think there's definitely a message that we should be getting behind in terms of the christian um perspective on the coronavirus and a lot of these videos that I'm going to show you here they're they're putting forth a really dangerous message that I think as Christians nobody should be on the side of this let me show you what I mean by watching these videos Can I ask you about your decision to go to church to be inside that building I wouldn't be anywhere else aren't you concerned you could infect other people if you get sick inside no people who don't go to this no church. I'm covered in Jesus's blood I'm covered in Jesus' well, blood. But other people who don't go to this church who you might encounter? All of these people go to this church. No, but you're going to be in places where other people I go are. to the grocery store every day. I'm in Walmart, what? Home Depot, all of those people. But you people. could get them sick from what happens They the could church. get me sick, but they're not because I'm covered in his blood. Thank you very much. She says that she can't get sick. She wants to continue to go to church, um, but she says she can't get sick because the blood of Jesus protects her from it. She says, oh, no, you know what? I'm, I'm a Christian, so I can't 
get sick. This is very different than saying something like, oh, I'm going to continue to go to church because it's, you know, it's Jesus, God's calling on the believer to continue to meet with the with the saints. I don't want to neglect that and I don't want to give um, the government jurisdiction over the church. I can understand that kind of argument, but this idea that, hey, I'm not going to get sick anywhere anyway or nobody else is going to get sick because I'm a Christian is very misguided. And I'll tell you why, but first let's watch this video of this Florida pastor to give you a little bit of a a background on this. Um, there's a there's particular prominent uh, Florida pastor that continue to hell, hold big, big services even in amidst um, kind of a, a a law that went by um, that said don't you know don't leave your house basically don't don't have these big events but the pastor went on and did it and this was his, kind of his um, argument to why he did it. It's troubling stuff. Teen machines that basically kill every virus in the place. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown defending his decision to stay open in this video posted to his YouTube channel. If they sneeze it, it shoots it down like at 100 miles an hour. It'll, it'll neutralize it in split second. So this Florida pastor was saying, hey, look, we got these zappers that whenever you come into the church or whatever, we got these things um, that take away, you know, the coronavirus isn't, isn't here, um, that kind of thing. And so not only has there been no kind of verification behind those claims, which just seem totally absurd and and very strange, honestly, um, but there is this common idea, and, and we can, can we can begin to talk about it a little bit now uh, of some of these churches that are continuing to meet, meet that because they're Christians, they can't get sick. I think this kind of belief system that hey, look, you know, we're Christians, we're not going to get sick here, um, you know, it kind of stems from this kind of prosperity gospel movement this name it and claim it uh, movement where people believe that Jesus, when they become a Christian, that Jesus is going to make them healthy, um, wealthy, and comfortable. Um, this idea that, okay, hey, look, you know what, w once we're Christians, you know, God's got our back, so nothing nothing troubling or, or difficult or, or any time this kind of suffering is going to happen to us um, because, because we're Christians. Whether you're continuing to meet as a church or not, I don't think anybody from the Christian community community or the body of Christ should be saying, hey, look, we're meeting because nobody's going to get sick. Like to me, that is that is a complete misunderstanding of, of the Christian life. We are going to encounter difficulty. We are like partaking in the suffering of this fallen world. Um, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, you realize that your brokenness is still very apparent. Uh, physically, emotionally, uh, when we talk about mental health, these issues are still there they're still we're still battling with christians deal with suffering christians get the coronavirus christians will get sick non-christians will get sick but our goal here is to speak into the situation with a biblically oriented perspective okay i want to read here from romans 8 26 and i think these verses are really relevant to what we're talking about now in terms of uh does god allow sickness what what is god god's purpose in this and it says likewise the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know what to pray as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of god and we know that for those who love god all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose okay i want to talk about that last verse and it says uh, for all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose okay what does it mean when it says all things okay does that include the coronavirus i think so i i don't see any reason not to include that when it says all things work together the difficulty the the struggle the sickness the suffering all things work together for good what does it mean by good okay you know does that mean you know this coronavirus that means nobody's going to get sick does that mean everybody's going to be healthy that means i'll never encounter suffering i'll always be happy comfortable and wealthy no what what, what is this idea of good then well, I think the Bible continually points to something more than just worldly success or worldly, worldly comfort or worldly wealth. It's something transcendent. It's transcendent meaning and purpose that gives God glory. This idea of good, all things work together for good. 
I just have to believe that that is pointing towards God. That is leading us towards God. The ultimate good is God. So it's not leading us toward happiness or working things out so we can be happy or, or comfortable or, or wealthy, but it's leading us to God in this these greater meaningful, purposeful things. Does that mean we understand God's purposes? Like even in the coronavirus, whether you're attending church or not, kind of shifting from that at this point, but okay, but what is what are God's purposes in this? This is a, a scary thing. This is a, we have lots of anxiety. Does God have control over that? What's going on here? What's God's purpose in this? And and I have to believe in my heart, what, what I've read in the scripture is that if we understood God's purposes fully, then we wouldn't need to trust him. We wouldn't need to have faith in him. And that that would take away a whole aspect of, of, of our growth and, and our relationship with God because ultimately we need to trust him. We need to have faith in him. That is going to be the game changer. Um, it's not about trying to figure out, oh, what is God, you know, what what is God doing here? What's going on here? But it's God. I don't necessarily want to know what's going on, and, and the suffering is hard, and 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 life is hard. But I trust you. I trust you. And ultimately, that is what God is asking from you. He's not asking you to have everything figured out. He's not asking you to know exactly what he's doing. He's not asking you to ha have a perfect response to this because ultimately we're all flawed. We're just trying to figure that, this out. We're trying to be discerning. And that's why I say, have so much grace for people as, as they're trying to work through what this life, this reality looks like for them, how to best honor God in it. And, and you know what? we're called to trust him in the anxiety and the uncertainty um he is trustworthy so that is my encouragement for you today i hope you enjoyed this video and ultimately i would say you know if you're seeing people say this stuff in terms of oh you know what i'm a christian i can't get the coronavirus i would just point them to the fact hey look you know what we still partake in suffering on this earth um but ultimately our, our calling and our, and our hope is for um, eternity and, and living for eternal things. And yes, we will have suffering on this earth. Paul suffered greatly, um, but there was a deeper purpose and a deeper meaning that he found in Christ. And that is what we're looking for. That is what we ought to be pointing people to. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It is a pleasure to be able to talk to you guys and, and chat with you online. Um, it, this is my dream come true, is to be able to speak to you guys and just communicate the gospel, think biblically about current events. And that is my passion. So thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon once again. It is a huge blessing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it before. And, you know, share a video with your friends if you find them helpful. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. God bless.